The stars were out. A fire was crackling in the fire pit. Roz and Brightbill were settling into their first night in their new home. This lodge is where we will live from now on, the robot plucked her son from this little wooden nest and placed him on the floor. I hope you like it. The gosling did like it. He liked that it was big and warm and peaceful. He liked knowing that the forest and the pond were just outside. He waddled around, peeping to himself and exploring every little corner of the lodge until it was time for bed. His mother carefully laid him on a soft cushion of moss, but he didn't want to sleep there, so she put him back in his little nest. But he didn't want to sleep there either. Bright Bill looked up and said, Mama, sit. Roz sat down. And then he said, Mama, hold. Roz held him. The robot's body may have been hard and mechanical, but it was strong and safe. The gosling felt loved. His eyes slowly winked closed, and he spent the whole night quietly sleeping in his mother's arms. The deer family did not run from the sound of snapping twigs and crunching leaves. They had heard all about Roz and Brightbill, and they knew there was nothing to fear. Crown Point stood before his doe and his three spotted fawns, and the family watched as the robot approached with the gosling on his shoulder, her shoulder. Hello, dear. My name is Roz, and this is Brightbill. We are looking for a doe named Tawny. Crown Point moved aside, and the doe silently stepped forward. Mr. Beaver helped us build a lodge, said Roz, and he thought you might help us grow a garden. Mr. Beaver helped you, came Tawny's gentle voice. You must have done something for the beavers. I brought them freshly cut trees, said Roz. Tawny looked at Crown Point, and the buck slowly nodded. I will help you grow a garden, said the doe to the robot, if you will let my family eat from it. The robot nodded in agreement, and then she quietly led Tawny back to the nest. After inspecting the grounds, Tawny asked Roz to remove all the dried brambles and weeds and leaves from the garden area. She asked her burrowing friends, the moles and the groundhogs, to dig through the dirt and loosen the soil. And then she asked all the neighbors to do the same thing. Uh, excuse me. She asked all the neighbors to do something rather peculiar. Please leave your droppings around the nest. The more droppings, the richer the soil, the healthier the garden. As you can imagine, Tawny's request got everyone's attention. The place was soon crawling with woodland creatures curious to hear more about the garden project. And just like that, the robot was meeting her neighbors. The plan to help her make friends was already starting to work. There was a festive feeling around the nest that day. Animals were coming and going and chatting and laughing. After some pleasant conversation, each neighbor would choose their spot, leave their droppings, and be on their way. And always with a smile. We're happy to help, the two smiling weasels, after finishing their business. It is our pleasure, said a flock of smiling sparrows before they flew away. Shouldn't be much longer now, said a smiling turtle as he slowly made his contribution. As all this was going on, Roz walked around and thanked everyone. I am not capable of doing this, she explained, and so your droppings are most appreciated. Once the grounds were fertilized, it was time for plants. Tawny brought Roz and Brightbill out to a lush meadow. The robot sank her fingers into the ground and felt the spongy layer of roots below the grass. Slowly, carefully, she rolled up wide strips of sod, exposing the dark, warmy soil. She carried the rolls back to the nest and spread them out to make a patchy lawn. Then she transplanted clumps of wildflowers and clovers and berries until the nest was shrouded by a scraggly collection of plants. It's not much to look at now, said Tawny, but the grass will grow into those gaps and the flowers and the bushes will perk up after a few days. I will return soon and make sure that it's all taking root. Before long, this will be a lovely, wild garden. Like most goslings, Bright Bill followed his mother everywhere. He was a slow, tottery little thing, but Roz was rarely in a hurry, and together they loved meandering along the forest paths and around the banks of the pond. However, they spent most of their time right in their own garden. You see, the garden was no longer scraggly. Thanks to Roz's careful attention, it was now bursting with clearly Roz had been designed to work with plants. Tawny said, oh, Roz, you've been busy, as her family grazed in the wonderland of growing things. This garden is glorious. You'll be seeing quite a lot of us around here. Tawny meant what she said. Each morning around daybreak, Roz and Brightbill would hear quiet footsteps outside the nest. 
There would be Tawny and Crown Point and their fawns, Willow, Thistle, and Brook, happily nibbling in the garden. The deer were not the only regular visitors. The beavers became quite fond of gnawing on a certain hardy shrub at the edge. Dig down, the old groundhog popped up to munch on berries. Broadfoot, the wild, giant bull moose, came by to chew on tree roots. And, of course, bees and butterflies were there every day, happily floating through the flowers. There always seemed to be friendly animals hanging around the garden. And it was amazing how differently everyone treated Roz these days. Animals who once ran from Robot in fear now stopped by the nest to spend time with her. And the neighbors smiled and waved whenever Roz and Brightbill wandered past. And at the dawn truce, the other mothers were eager to share their parenting advice. Make sure Brightbill gets plenty of rest. A tired gosling is a cranky gosling. When the wind starts blowing from the north, you must immediately get Brightbill to safety. North winds always bring bad weather. You'll never be the perfect weather, so just do the best you can. All Brightbill really needs is to know you're doing your best. No gosling had ever had a more attentive mother. Roz was always there, ready to answer her son's questions, or to play with him, or rock him to sleep, or whisk him away from danger. With a computer brain packed full of parenting advice, the lessons that she was learning on her own, the robot was actually becoming an excellent mother. Good afternoon, you two, said Loudwing as she waddled into the garter. Remember me, Brightwell? Loudwing, Loudwing. Very good, the old goose giggled. Now, Roz, do you know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is swimming day, the day when all the parents take their goslings out to the pond for the first time. And they must bring Brightbill. Swim, swim, said the gosling, shaking his tail feathers. Brightbill can go, said Roz, but I cannot swim. I cannot go onto the pond with him. I will not be able to protect him. Who'd have thought a big thing like you would be afraid of a little water, Loudwing said. Well, don't worry, Brightbill. He'll be safe in the flock, and he's going to have so much fun swimming with the other goslings. We begin at sunrise. Don't be late. See you in the morning. And with that, the goose plopped into the water and glided away. Swim, swim, said the gosling. Yes, Brightbill, said the robot, staring at the pond. Swim, swim. Early the next morning, peeps and honks and splashes became echoing across the calm water. Roz and Brightbill followed a trail through the fog and over to a beach that was crawling with fluffy gosling and proud parents. Roz took a few steps into the water, and her survival instincts immediately flared up. The robot's computer brain knew that if water got inside her body, it could do serious damage. And so as the other parents began swimming across the pond, Roz stood safely in the shallows and watched. Bright Bill ran up and down the beach with the other goslings, peeping and laughing and pretending to be afraid of tiny waves. When one wave finally pulled him in, he felt his body floating on top of the water. A big smile appeared on his face. Clearly, Brightbill was designed to swim. Very good, Brightbill, said Loudwing as she floated past. You're a natural. Yes, Brightbill, you are a natural, said Ross, trying to sound like a good mother. Loudwing rounded up all the goslings and gave them a quick swimming lesson. Remember, everyone paddle your feet evenly to swim in a straight line. Paddle your right foot to go left, your left foot to go right. Try it out. Join the rest of us when you're ready. Happy swimming day. Loudwing and the other adult geese calmly glided towards the center of the pond. A jumble of goslings tried to keep up with them. The youngsters jostled and splashed and peeped with excitement, and gradually they paddled in the direction of their parents. Only Brightbill lagged behind. Mama swim? Roz pointed to the flock. I cannot swim. Go have fun with the other geese. You will be safe with them. The gosling took a deep breath, then he shook his tail feathers, paddled his feet, and set out on his very first swim. He drifted too far to the left. Then he drifted too far to the right. But his little feet just kept paddling until he caught up with the other goslings. Ross spent the morning watching her son swim around and around the pond. And as she watched him, she felt something like gratitude. Thanks to Bright Bill, the robot now had friends and shelter and help. Thanks to Bright Bill, the robot had become better at surviving. In a way, Roz needed Bright Bill as much as Bright Bill needed Roz. Which was precisely why she felt such concern when the mood of the pond suddenly changed. One moment, everything was tranquil, and the next moment, the geese were in panic. Something was violently sloshing through the group. It was Rockmouth, a giant, toothy pike. The fish had been a problem in the pond for as long as everyone could remember, but he'd never attacked goslings before. All the parents immediately went to protect their young, all the parents except for Roz. The robot could only stand in the shallows and watch as her son left the other geese behind and desperately swam toward his mother. Swim to me, Brightbill, quickly. 
The gosling kicked as fast as he could, but alone on the water, he became an easy target. The pond rippled as rock mouth slashed below the surface. Mama, help! squeaked Brightbill. The robot was terribly conflicted. Part of her knew she had to help her son, but another part knew she had to stay out of the deep water. Her body lurched forward and then backward again and again as she struggled to make a decision. And then Loudwing came to the rescue. Rockmouth, don't you dare harm that little darling. The old goose fluttered over and splashed down right on top of the fish. Leave him alone. She pecked and she kicked and she beat her wings against the fish until he surrendered to the murky depths of the pond. Loudwing escorted Brightbill back to the beach, and a minute later the gosling was in his mother's arms, safe and sound. Rockmouth isn't as dangerous as he seems, but I think that's enough swimming for one day. Brightbill soon forgot about the incident with Rockmouth, and he spent his morning cruising around mornings cruising around the pond with the other goslings. He became a great little swimmer. He also became a great little speaker. Hello, my name is Brightbill he said to everyone who was listening. The gosling was small for his age, but he always would be. But he was growing stronger and bigger by the day. His increasing size was matched by his increasing appetite. He gobbled down grass and berries and nuts and leaves, and sometimes he'd snack on little insects. If it was edible, Bright Bill would eat it. And even if it wasn't edible, he might eat it anyway. Ross felt something like fright the time she saw Bright Bill swallow pebbles on the beach. She was holding him upside down, hoping the pebbles would fall out. And then Loudwing stepped in. Put the gosling down, said the goose with a laugh. It's perfectly natural for him to eat a few pebbles. They'll help him digest his food, but not too many. Like most youngsters, Brightbill was incredibly curious. He explored the garden and the pond and the forest floor. He would occasionally explore neighboring homes. He'd wander down some hole in the ground and say to whoever was there, Hello, my name is Brightbill. Then a long robot arm would reach in and pull the gosling back out. Sorry to bother you, Roz would say in her friendliest voice. The mother and son slipped into a good nighttime routine. While the gosling slept, the robot might tend to the fire if it was cool out or gently fan him if it was warm. If he woke up hungry or thirsty, Roz brought him food or water, and whenever he had nightmares, she always was there to rock him back to sleep. A small squirrel was scuttling through the garden. Night Bill had, Bright Bill had never seen him before. He peered out from the nest and watched her bounce across the lawn. After a minute of spiling, the gosling shook his tail feathers and waddled outside. Hello, my name is Brightbill. The squirrel froze. Then she suddenly, slowly, turned around. And then she started to talk. Hi, Brightbill. My name is Chit Chat, and I'm a twelve and a half week old squirrel. And I'm new around here, and your home is really big, and it's really round, and I don't understand why smoke sometimes comes out of it. Reader, I'm not quite sure how Chit Chat got enough air into her lungs to get on like that, and I'm not quite sure how Bright Bill had the patience to listen, but he stood and politely nodded as Chit Chat rambled on and on. And sometimes I see you waddling behind your funny looking mother, and you seem so nice that I thought I'd come down and introduce myself, but now I'm nervous and I'm talking too much, and my name is Chit Chat. I think I said that already. There was a pleasant silence. Bright Bill stood on one foot for a moment. Then the gosling took a deep breath and said, it's very nice to meet you, Chit Chat. I don't think you talk too much. I think you talk just enough, and I like you, so let's be friends. A big smile appeared on the squirrel's tiny face, and for once, Chit Chat was speechless. Chit Chat wasn't speechless for long. She'd already been alive for a whole twelve and a half weeks, and she wanted to tell Bright Bill about every exciting thing and every boring thing that had ever happened to her. And so as the new friends played and explored and ate together, the squirrel shared her stories. I was born on the other side of the hill, and then last week I decided I was ready to build my first dray, which is what you call a squirrel nest, and now I live in that tree with the weird bump on its trunk, she said while the two of them kicked pebbles in the pond. One time, a weasel chased me through the treetops until he missed a branch and fell all the way down and crashed into a bush and walked away all wobbly, and he never bothered me again, she said while the two of them crawled through a hollow log. Ew, Goose, I saw you eat an ant one time, and I ate a gnat by accident. I didn't like it, and I mostly eat acorns and bark and tree buds and sometimes yummy berries that grow in your garden, she said while the two of them took a snack break. But Chit Chat was as good a listener as she was a talker, and whenever it was Bright Bill's turn to speak, she'd keep quiet and she'd hang on to every word. And do you know who enjoyed their conversations most of all? Her robot, Roz. The protective mother was never far away, and she felt something like amusement at the silly conversations that she overheard, and she felt something like happiness that her son had made such a good friend. 
Bright Bill had spent his entire life by the pond, and he was becoming very curious about what lay behind his neighborhood. So one day his mother said to him, Let us go for a walk and I will show you more water than you can possibly imagine. Roz placed the gosling on her left shoulder, and the two of them set off across the island. They marched out across the forest, crossed the great meadow, climbed uphill, and they were on the top of the island's western. For them was a grassy slope that descended all the way to the dark, choppy waves that surrounded the island. That is a lot of water, said the wide-eyed gosling. I'm a good swimmer, but I'm not good enough to swim across that pond. That is not a pond, said the robot. That is an ocean. I doubt any bird could swim across an ocean. Waves rolled in from the horizon, and seagulls circled above the shore. A steady breeze blew up the slope. Bright Bill's yellow fluff had recently changed over into a coat of silky brown feathers. He spread his feathery wings into the breeze, and then... Mama, look! For the briefest of moments, the wind lifted Bright Bill off the ground. But he quickly tipped backwards and thumped into the soft grass. How's flying? he squeaked. That was not flying, said Roz, looking back at her upside-down sun. Well, it was almost flying. I'm going to try again. I have observed many birds in flight, said Roz. Sometimes they flap their wings quickly, and other times they fly without flapping at all. They spread their wings and they soar in the wind. So I was soaring, said Bright Bill. Almost. There, look at that soaring seagull. It seems like she is not doing anything, but if you look closer, she'll notice she's making tiny adjustments with her wings and her tail. I think you should try adjusting your wind, your wings in the wind, just like her. Bright Bill hopped onto a rock and opened his wings wide. The wind is pushing me backwards. Change the angle of the wings, said the mother. Let us see what happens when they slice through the air. Bright Bill slowly angled his wings downward. The more he turned them, the less the wind pushed backwards. And just as his wing leveled off, Mama, look, he squeaked as his feet left the ground. I'm soaring, I'm soaring. He hovered there for a second, rising a little higher than before, and then he sailed backward into the soft grass again. The gosling kept hopping onto the rock and kept riding the wind until he kept tumbling into the grass. And he started to find his wings. With each attempt, he floated a little higher, a little higher, and finally, Bright Bill really did soar. He lifted high into the air and hung there floating. He turned his wings down and he felt himself drop. He wiggled his tear f tail feathers and he felt himself going back and forth. I'm a natural, he squeaked. You're doing very well, said Ross. You need to keep practicing, though. And so they spent the afternoon practicing up on the ridge. Once Bright Bill was comfortable soaring, he tried flapping his wings. He flapped high in the air. He flapped in straight lines. He flapped around in circles. A big smile appeared on the gosling's face. Clearly, Bright Bill was designed to fly. I'm flying, Mama. I'm really flying. You are flying, said the robot. Very good. Bright Bill was now a real flyer, but all that flying had worn him out. He lowered himself towards the ground and he tumbled into the grass one last time. His landing still needed some work. Roz placed Bright Bill on her shoulder and headed back to the nest. Bright Bill said in his sleepy voice, I can't believe I can fly now, Mama. I just wish, I wish you could fly with me. And then the gosling's words were replaced by his quiet, steady breathing as he fell asleep.